You're listening to Shoreline Conversations. Uh, I'm Keith, and for some reason, they invited me back to host again in Cole's absence. I'm actually really excited to be here today. We're doing a, a special episode where we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the, the Pathways by Gary Thomas. We've got Kevin and Sherry who wrote the uh, small group study guide curriculum for it. Uh, Sherry put together with Gary's uh, uh, resources and assessment that we have on our website that can help each of us identify what our um, sacred pathways are, the ways that we connect to God. And so I'm just excited to have this time with Kevin and with Sherry as we dive a little bit deeper into the pathways. Well, this is an exciting thing for me to be back uh, on this side of the, the table hosting this and then I get both of you here at the same time. Really is a neat thing. It's yeah. uh, I, I know that Sherry's going to make this just so much better than it would have been <laughs> ha- otherwise. Ha- happy to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we're continuing our Sacred Pathways hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, you both have really been involved in this. You know the book. You put together a study guide for it. Um, what is it about the concepts? And this is for mm-hmm. both of you. What is, what is it in the con- about the concepts here that really draws you to it? Well, I'll jump, I'll jump in and just say that the big picture is that I think a lot of people live with this feeling that um, I, I want to get close to God. I want to sense his presence. I want to feel his love more, but I'm not quite sure how to get there. And then you, add, you kind of add to that, and it, the problem is probably compounded because most people have been told this is how you meet with God. Absolutely. And by well, well-meaning parents and, and, and pastors and Sunday school teachers who tend to direct people to meet with God the way they do. And so, and, and, and through my years of ministry, I'm sure I've been guilty of that at different times of trying to kind of project the way I connect with God on other people. And so I love this because it says, God loves you. God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to draw closer to you and have you draw closer to him, but you can do it in a way that fits you. And so when people get that, it's kind of like this, oh, okay, I'm not weird. I'm okay. And I can do this thing I long for, and that is to, to draw near to God. So I, I get excited about helping people connect with God. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah and I yeah. think for me, just to understand that God um, loves relationship with each one of us Mm -hmm. and that each one of us is wired and designed individually. And Mm -hmm. even in the way that we approach God, that it can look, it can be different. Kevin's Mm -hmm. can look differently than the way that I meet God. And um, God has created, uniquely created us. And I love that he even has allowed us to relate with him in unique ways that actually line up with the way that he's created us. And um, so I think that that's exciting for me. And I, I think also um, it's the, the concept that um, we have a journey that mm. we're on in our relationship with, with God and that there's part of the journey that is our part. Right. And I, I mean, I even think about in the garden in perfection, Adam and Eve had, had a choice. They had to, to make a step forward to follow God. And um, they chose to not follow him, but God gave um, them the chance to be a part of their journey, you know? And so I think that for me, this is a way that we can be a part of the journey and figuring out what works best for the way that um, God has designed us. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's exciting for me. I love that. The the freedom, I think, is a big deal. I, uh, I pulled out just the other day as I was um, teaching both middle school and high school, um, a large stack of completely empty journals that mm. I've tried to use over the years as people have been encouraging me. Yeah. You've got a journal. You have to journal. You so have I know to journal. I for Christmas now. Yeah. Another blank journal, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I get it's through so like funny. the first day and I'm like, I just, I can't do it. I'm sorry. You had another thought though that you were going to Oh, share. I was just thinking about how uh, Gary wrote this book. I think it's been about 25 years ago. Uh, and it's, it, it holds up because it's biblical and it's true. Right. But so before this book was written, our, all of our three sons are in their 30s now. And so even in raising children when they were very mm-hmm. young, we started to recognize they're each very unique, each very mm-hmm. different. As we taught them the Bible, we found that, diff- that different ones of our sons like to read it or listen to it or come at it differently. The same Bible, the same Jesus, but they had their own kind of way. So we were learning this stuff before there was a book about right. it, it, just by recognizing that every single person is different. If that's true, how, how bizarre to say to everyone, this is your path for spiritual growth. Right. This is your path to be close to God. Do these five things, follow these eight steps, and you'll be close to God. And then you, and, and one of them is journaling, by the way. Right. And so, you know, so, so the problem becomes, well, wait a minute, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't draw me close right. to God. 
And so I think even just raising kids, and obviously you've got a gaggle of kids, and so right. uh, you, know, you go, yeah, if I tried to force them all to do anything the same, right. it doesn't go very well. well. I think what's happened for me uh, before I really looked into this was that I, I, I agreed that we were gonna do it differently. Mm -hmm. So I would say, so you can read your Bible and pray and sing to God in the morning, or you can pray, read your Bible, and sing to God in the afternoon, right? The, 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 like, so we'll give you a little bit of leeway. Is, yeah. um, but are you I a love, morning night, or you a morning person, or a night absolutely. person, right? <laughs> and, and, and so my deviations were a little yeah. bit different, but mm. we've got nine pathways here that mm. Gary Thomas talked yeah. about, and, and they're a little bit different than whether you do it in the morning or the afternoon. Absolutely. Uh, Sherry, can you give us a little bit of a brief overview yeah, of them? Yeah, quickly. He, Gary actually divides them into three groups. And uh, so the first one he calls the Pathways of Wonder. And in that grouping, they it's the naturalist. And I, I like Gary has this uh, little tagline with each one that kind of helps to summarize each one. And I think he's done a good mm -hmm. job. So the naturalist, he says, um, let me be outdoors. That's really easy to figure that out. Get me outdoors. That's how I, I can right. meet with God. And then um, the next uh, pathway in that grouping is called the sensate. And the sensate actually just says, let me experience, let me feel, let me taste, let me uh, fully experience with all my senses. Right. And so that's the second one in that grouping. And then the traditional, the Traditional, the traditionalist. It's a hard word. <laughs> Let's say that again. The, I get kind of, I get excited. <laughs> the traditionalist says, "Let me remember," yeah. mm. and it, it looks at um, rituals and those um, this uh, things that were a, a part of faith for so long, and and so you just remember those things and you do them. And then mm. his second grouping is called the Pathways of Contemplation. And again, he has three pathways in that grouping. And the first one is the intellectual. And the intellectual says, let me think. And, um, and the second one is the um, ascetic. And the ascetic is a person who just says, um, I, I need some time alone with God. I need silence. I need solitude. And that's how I best meet with mm -hmm. God. And so that's the second one in that grouping. And then the contemplative um, says, um, just let me feel. And this is sort of uh, like adoring God, mm -hmm. feel his love and um, really spend time just, um, you know, dwelling in that um, experience of God, that contemplative uh, says, let me feel. And then the last one is the pathways of action. Mm -hmm. And so that would be the caregiver who says, let me care. And then the activist who says, let me conquer, let me do something, do mm -hmm. something for God. That's how I'm going to best mm -hmm. meet with God. And then finally, the ninth one is the enthusiast. And they say, let me celebrate. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just e expressive about their faith and, um, so those are the nine, and it has helped me to kind of remember the little tag lines to mm -hmm. give a little fuller definition to all of them. As you go through those, I was just thinking, wow, I want to be every one of those. Like yeah. you, you got me excited about yeah. being all of those. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, uh, Gary put these in clusters of, of yeah. three, of wonder and of contemplation and of action. Yeah. Why? What, what's yeah. the importance of that? Why, yeah. why do you see the benefit of us uh, looking at them that way? Yeah, I think with, within the nine different pathways, and my guess is if you ask Gary, he'd probably say there's probably there's other pathways too. This, these are just ones that are really overt in the Bible. There's biblical examples and characters, and you can kind of identify them. So I think just sort of organizationally, so when you talk about the pathways of wonder, uh, it's interesting because each of the different, you know, those three pathways, they wonder in different ways, mm. you know, and then the, then the pathways of contemplation is kind of reflecting and thinking. So the intellectual is more reflecting in the sense of more a studious kind of an approach. Uh, but an, an ascetic says, let me reflect by by pushing, a, you know, almost pushing away the senses and just kind of getting numb to all the incoming data and just kind of having a quiet place to meet with God. And mm. so I think that I think it, it helps us organizationally in our minds to kind of see. Uh, but I, I think that at the end of the day, and one of the reasons, Keith, when you said, when you listen to Sherry walking through these, you go, I'd like to do all of those. <laughs> That's because you want to be close to God. And you're going, oh, those are all ways, those are all things that would help me draw near to God. I want to be close to God. I'll try them all. Right. And I actually, and actually, um, when Sherry and I were writing the study guide for this uh, for this book and for a video curriculum that Gary, uh, that Gary did, um, we talked about, in the very end of it, and I'll be talking about this in the last week of our, in our sermon series, 
uh, when you think about the pathways, think about one, some, and all. And one is there's one pathway for all of us. It's kind of like our, uh, I describe it like on the Jetsons, the old cartoon, you know, like that, the, the walking <laughs> pathway that now that was all futuristic. Now every airport right. has them, but right. Right. You get on that pathway and boom, you're going to be moving towards God. For me, that's the intellectual approach. I scored on that one almost double what I scored in any other one. Whoa. And so it's like, I'm like, I'm mostly that. Um, and so it's like, um, was your strongest one the naturalist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. we've been married long enough. I should yeah. know this. Um, but, and so, but what was interesting, and we were talking about this before we, we went on air with filming this, is that Keith, you had said your top three, there was one in each of the three clusters of right. pathways. And sure, you said it was the same mm -hmm. case. And you said, what about you, Kevin? So I took out my, these are my results for my survey right. tool, which is on our website. Anybody can do it and just do it for free. And, but um, my top three spread across the three different areas. And so I think that shows that it's not like we're locked into this is the only way we can draw near to God, but this this one sum all concept is pick one that you know, man, when I got to get close to God, I really need to right now, I'm going to jump on that pathway because I know it just gets me there quickly. The sum is to say there's some that you have strength in or some that you go, I think I could really connect with God and I want to get closer to God. So I'll explore some of them. But I don't tell people try to live out all of them because like on mine, I've got a couple. Uh, so, so like my top one is a 23 out of 25 points. My bottom one is six out of 25 points. And so, um, and that's actually the sensate. And that's the, you know, it's like all your senses. That kind of stuff. I'm like, that just doesn't, it's like telling you to, to, the way to meet Jesus is to I journal. have to share this. I got a zero in sensate. Did you? I don't even know how <laughs> that was on, possible. Oh, oh, we do it. That, that was an air one during the time. We didn't touch. But yeah, exactly. So you, you can go, so, so I'm not going to say, Keith, you know, listen, you scored really, some things in life you go, oh, you scored low. You got to grow in that. Right, way. work you on know, it. That, don't, why? Don't. Right. But here's the, here's the all appreciate them all, mm. understand them all. So if one of your girls or a Finn are like, that's their approach, you can understand enough to say, you know, hey, that's great. And I cheer you right. on instead of going, that doesn't count, right. that's, not, that's <laughs> not for real, come on. Now, I, I wanna say one other thing too, I think is really important, and that is that with all the different pathways, there's still things that are common throughout all of them. Mm -hmm. so, so you talk about, you know, you know, reading the Bible, no matter what your pathway is, as a Christian, you open the Word of God, but a naturalist might do it outdoors and they can kind of connect it out there. A sensei might do it where they say, you know, I like to really put some quiet music in the background, have that listening going on while I read. But everyone's going to open the Word. Every person's going to pray. Every Christian's going to pray, but we're going to do it in different ways. Right. So it's not that, that, that our behaviors are that different, but it's the way we experience them and draw near to God in those in those kind of practices. And so I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So Sherry, how, how do you see the process of knowing your pathways and understanding that God has made us all different, something that kind of sets us free and, and gives mm. us the opportunity to bring us joy, you know, through well, this? Well, kind of to take on to what Kevin was saying, I have found personally for me that just knowing that, you know, one of my top ones is being out in nature. Mm -hmm. And so uh, how it has set me free is that when I am struggling and finding that I, I need some more time with God. I need to feel closer with God. Because I have studied this now through Gary's information, I have figured out that being outside actually does that for me. Mm -hmm. So I make a point now to actually go outside. And I have to say that I didn't fully, I was not fully aware of that about me. I w I've been a runner for years and I just thought I loved running. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would tell people that when I run, I meet God. I never kind of put the two together. Mm -hmm. and uh, But now mm -hmm. since studying Gary's book and working through that, um, and now I can't run anymore. I, I you know, I've, I did that for decades and so, but I make sure that I get out and walk. But now I actually will think, oh, I need to walk, not just for exercise, but to be, to have a sense that I'm growing closer with God. And mm -hmm. that's been kind of a, a new way um, of, of looking and the, the freedom that I have tools. Right. I think that this gives us a tool on how we can work to grow closer with God. Mm -hmm. Well, I like what you said, Kevin, is that you you still do them yeah. all. You still yeah. engage in them. But I also love the idea of freedom because yeah. I like to run. Yeah. And, and I've often thought, okay, I can either spend time with God or I can go exercise, you know, but there's this amazing freedom to say, I can actually meet with God mm -hmm. while I'm running. And I'm also pretty high in the ascetic. And so yeah. while I'm out in nature running by myself, yeah. um, I get to, to actually do like three things at one time, you know, right. 
Yeah. And I think it's just a, a really neat thing. Yeah. Um, and as you said, Kevin, we're, we're all different in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do we go about not only recognizing that other people do it differently yeah. or design differently, but how do we help them in that or encourage yeah. them yeah. in that? Well, I think that one of the great things about the sermon series that we're doing at Shoreline and then about sitting down and reading, reading the book, Sacred Pathways by Gary Thomas. <laughs> um, but uh, but the, one of the strengths of doing that is that we can really understand the different pathways. So it's, it, again, if it's like you're raising your kids and you go, man, I just don't understand this kid. They're just so different than me. Well, then get to understand them. You know, get as, as a parent, hmm. um, they may be different, but that doesn't mean, you know, you may, not, you may not see the world just the way they do, but you can understand how they see the world. And so I think for, for Christians to look at the different pathways, to understand them and to be able to say, you know what, I can appreciate, that's kind of that all, I can appreciate all of them. And there's some that may not connect for me, but I don't need to look at people as a second rate citizen or less spiritually mature if that's their pathway. I can say that's fantastic because, here, and, and I think this is the key amongst all of these, is we all have the same goal. Mm-hmm. We want to love God. We want to know his love. We want to feel intimate with him. We want to get closer to him. And so that's, that's the goal for every Christian. And if a person, if a Christian says that's not really my goal, then they got to say, well, how much do I really know Jesus? Because if you know him, you want to know him more, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So, so we, we have the same goal but different ways to get to that. And I'll reemphasize something I said in last week's sermon, which in our world, I think it's just important to clarify. Uh, there's only one way to God the Father through Jesus, faith in Jesus Christ, right. as, as through the leading of the Holy Spirit. We're not saying there's many ways to God. There's only one way to God. These pathways are, once you've come to God through faith in Jesus, what's my pathway to continued spiritual growth and, and intimacy and maturity? Mm-hmm. And so there's one way to come to God through faith in Jesus Christ. There's many ways to grow in that relationship. And, and so to be able to, to understand the varied pathways and say, I get it. I can see how that can, that can lead different people closer to God. And so I will celebrate that and, and cheer that on, if, whether it's other you know, people in my small group, whether it's family members, whether it's a spouse. Um, the last thing we want to do is, is somebody who's really connecting meaningfully with God and for, to kind of treat them like, well, that doesn't count. That's not good mm-hmm. enough. That's not a real. And all of a sudden they're like, we shut down the very way God designed for them to connect with him. And so we've got to be able to bless and encourage those things. Well, and the, I think the way you find out about your pathways is to maybe do some kind of assessment. Yeah. You can do it while I <clears throat> share while you were talking through it. I said, oh, that could be me. Now I've already done an assessment, but, but I sort of connected with a few of them. Yeah. But I realized that when I did an assessment, I got a little bit more depth to it. So you mm-hmm. put together an assessment. Um, what was the process to come up with that? Mm-hmm. And where did that come from? And, and how do you see that? Being more than us just sharing in this podcast what the pathways are, but that what more can this assessment do for people then right. as they yeah. engage in it? And actually, all we did was we took Gary Thomas's book, and in his book, he actually has questions that mm-hmm. people can, while they're reading the book, assess whether that pathway is one for them, one of their highest ones that, you know, the way that they tend to meet God. Right. Um, um, so we took those questions, and with Gary's permission, though, we uh, we edited a few, and uh, because we're good friends with him, and we actually write with him in a, in a regular way, so he said, absolutely, I trust you guys. So we took his questions, and then we edited a few, and then uh, what we did different than what is done in the book is when you read the chapter, then you have the questions for that particular pathway, so you kind of know when you're answering the questions. So you might read the chapter on intellectual, and you might be thinking, oh, I think I'm an intellectual. And I sure can, would like yeah, to be. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And you might even, that might, um, you know, affect how you even answer because you got all the questions right there. Right. So we mixed them all up. So mm-hmm. you're reading all the the questions for all nine of the pathways and you don't know when you're answering that question, right. which pathway it is. So it's been kind of fun. And we, uh, we kind of put it, we put it together on a website and anybody can do, you know, go on our website and do, and do the assessment. Right. And then what's really neat is you get an instant, you get instant feedback back. If you, uh, at the bottom check that you want to see some meet with someone at shoreline, mm-hmm. then we actually get to see what you, what your, you know, um, numbers are. But right. if you don't check that box, we don't even see your number. So you can be, you can know that you're anonymous. I also wanted to make a point too. Kevin gave his number of a 24, but, um, 23. or 23. Oh, sorry. Way down at 23. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to get too nervous about no, the numbers right. though, yeah. because it's a self assessment. Right. You're assessing yourselves. Mm-hmm. And I found that, you know, it, um, you know, on one side, we, 
you, you answer a question, you say, I'm never like that. And then the other one is, I'm always like that. Right. There's some people who take this and they go, how can you ever say you're always right. or, you yeah. know, and so, but what I say to people, don't take it too seriously, read it and then put your hand, don't, don't agonize over each right. question. It's not meant to do that. It's really trying to assess your top ones. Mm -hmm. And so then mm -hmm. you can have these tools in your toolbox yeah. on um, how to, to grow closer with God. So yeah. yeah. I scored really high on the intellectual, but I, and I've heard that word intellectual a lot over the years, mm -hmm. and I would never describe myself mm -hmm. as an intellectual. Like I'm not an academic, I, yeah. that's not me. Um, so that was hard just getting over that word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when I really, then I read the book and I understand, okay, no, it's how I experience yeah. God is yeah. through my mind. Right. It's not that I go and have intellectual debates yeah. with people or that, right. you know, or that I'm a, a genius. Yeah. And so it's and that you just think that and you and you love thinking about yeah, the right, things like of God think. and, and and if you were to ask me Keith because I know you I know that when you're when you're thinking through something you're you're, you're deliberative you're 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 intentional you're really you're, but but in t there's a moment when a, a switch clicks and your brain goes I get it and when you do you're going right, right. I mean that's that's how God's Absolutely. made you and so I think that when a, a biblical theological concept becomes real to you you're mm -hmm. like oh and you've got to run towards God with that reality. Right. That's the intellectual approach, is right. that your ability to understand things about God propels you into his presence and closer mm -hmm. in relationship. It's not that you like that you have an academic, you know, right. like I gotta sit and study constantly. It's that that you connect with God through understanding the things of God. Whereas right. other people say, No, I connect with God because my heart engages right. and I feel his presence, or I connect with God because you know, but the intellectual is I connect with God through an understanding of him and I can see that with you. I can see that when I'm sure that when the certain concepts become real or more real, you're just like, Man, that just propels you into the presence of, of God. No, so, that I would absolutely affirm. Yeah. I don't I don't usually feel it. Yeah. It's usually it's in my brain, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that all of those things. And, and the happen, understanding you know. then can move it to your heart. Right. Right. And oh yeah, it can be yeah. implemented in my life, and yeah. I can own it. Um, but it comes, yeah, primarily yeah. through my through my head and not through yeah. my feelings. And then know? for someone like you, you get excited about that, and that draws you closer to God. And mm -hmm. then as a teacher, you mm -hmm. are actually able to help those of us who who uh, listen to you teach. Uh, we, as you have gotten closer with God through that concept, mm -hmm. it allows us to get closer with God through your pathway. I, I, I really that's believe, really neat. How, I, yeah. I really I like believe that. Yeah. that um, so I'll share something that's just happened Absolutely. to me recently. Uh, I was when I took the assessment, I have never thought of the pathway of caregiver as or giving care as being a way that I met God. But when I took the assessment, that was my second highest one. And I began to think about that. And um, I thought, you know what, that is me. I do meet God when I'm giving care to people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to be a pastor's wife when I was in junior high, mm -hmm. is I watched I watched my pastor and his wife and she just she took care of people mm -hmm. and I thought I would I would like to be in that position because I want to I want to help people I want right. to you know lighten their load or just just be there for them but it wasn't until I started working with Gary's material that I realized that that's how I meet God mm -hmm. my caregiving has always been about other people mm -hmm. in my head but right. now I've realized that it's 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 actually how I grow closer with God. Mm -hmm. And so that that was um, a new thought for me in, just in the last months. I love that. I had a conversation with someone just the other day, and they said the same exact thing about caregiver. Mm -hmm. He said, I just thought I just cared for people. Yeah. And I said, now you know that this is how you can actually meet with God. Yeah. So you should right. seek out those opportunities, and those are yeah. chances for you to draw closer to God. And that's really kind of like a nuanced piece to this whole yeah. thing it's not just so black and white but that there's yeah. some little subtleties to the whole thing and yeah are there more of those kind of nuanced points that are in the book that you didn't think maybe could have fit necessarily in your one-way converse yeah. it's not yeah. really a conversation when you're preaching right yeah. it's really yeah. one way yeah. um that maybe you'd like to bring up here that that are well i i do think about how as people are listening to the sermons or people are, are, are reading the book um to not come in with your preconceived notion of what each pathway the title means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of them is an activist. Right. So oh, I'm not a political activist. Where I'm you know picketing and and you know get. So no, no, that's not. 
the, these are people who meet God by seeking, you know, what is just and right and living, you know, and, and, and when they fight, when they, they fight the evil in the world, it could be a very spiritual thing, right? But they, and they see God's victory, they feel closer to God in part in that partnership. So, so sometimes the, the titling, so in the same way that you feel like intellectual, I don't think of myself that way. Right. Okay. If it means this, oh, okay, I can see that. Well, I'm not an activist. Oh, if what you mean by an activist is that I meet God by feeling like I'm in partnership with Him in the world, making a difference. Right. Yes, that's that's what He means by activist. Right. And so, uh, and this is the problem with words: is they, mm -hmm. they you know, through time and through history, um, uh, uh, Gary was actually telling us that there was somebody who was. Um, you know, working on this, the same ideas and taking his stuff and trying to kind of make it, trying to kind of make it fit his context. And I think he said like, for the naturalist, you want to call him like a naturist. I think in some circles, that means a person who, who spends time outdoors without clothing on. Correct. And, uh, and so it's like he said, he said, maybe that's not the term you want to use because for some people that might work better, but for other people like to bring a certain picture in their mind, they really don't need when they're working on their spiritual pathways. And so, uh, you know, and so that's, that's the kind of thing where, you know, don't predetermine by what you think the title of the pathway means. And then second, I would say, even when you know what it means, if, you know, go a little deeper than just saying, well, that, yeah, that's kind of me, or oh, that's really not me. So like when I saw that the naturalist was very high for me, I'm not a, a runner or a, a big hiker where I gotta be outdoors all, all the time, but I'm, I'm a golfer. And, and most of my golfing I do outdoors. Yeah, almost all uh, of it. I've got a friend who's got an indoor like video <laughs> thing, but uh, that's not nearly as much fun. Uh, but also, um, we live in a valley area where outside our windows you can see trees and hills. And I don't think there's been a day for the, how many years have we, 11 years we've lived there, where I don't look out the windows and say, thank you, Lord. I can just see your glow. And I just, I'm continually appreciative of that. Mm. Um, before I was a Christian, I think I had, was already encountering God because I grew up on the beaches in Southern California and in waves mm. of the ocean. I always, it was like there was, even though I grew up in an atheistic home, I had the sense that there was something or someone who made all this. I was sort of, I was a pre-believer seeking, wondering, I mean, I was still atheistic and self-centered, but there was, when, when I became a believer, sort of reading the scripture about God, God in creation, I'm like, yeah. So, so partly for me has been walking that you know, recognizing that, boy, there's more of that in me than I realize. And if that's the way that I can connect with God, I, you know, my, my, again, our ultimate goal is to grow closer to God, to love him more, to worship him. If that pathway will help me, I'm going to learn how to walk on that more and more. Mm. So. And Kevin talked about the one and the some and the all. And you just got me thinking when you talked about the surfing. Mm -hmm. I've actually talked to a few different people who have said that's how they connect with God. Mm -hmm. They just surf mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. I don't read my Bible. I don't pray. I don't go to yeah. church. I don't need to be in community. I I, I just surf all the time. Um, what would your advice mm -hmm. be to someone like that, Sherry, that uh, well, wants I, to just do one of yeah, these things? In I that think room? it's one of the warnings. I think we have to be very careful. God calls us to uh, be with other believers and community. Mm -hmm. He calls us to the church. And uh, so I, I, I think that, it, and Kevin was talking about, we have to think of uh, the basics, the foundations of our faith, and that scripture and prayer, and it's fellowship. Yep. It's being with the church, being with believers. And so for somebody who would say that, I, I feel like they're missing out on a, a piece of the, the call that, the, right. that God has given to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that we have to be very careful. Uh, that's one of the warnings. Um, yeah. a, another warning that I was just thinking about as Kevin was talking about, as he talked about how uh, when Kevin and I look out our window every single day, and we really do mm -hmm. for the last, and we both are, uh, you know, people who really meet God through, through uh, being in nature and so we're great for each other like mm -hmm. he he'll he'll call me say sherry look at this and mm -hmm. it can happen four you know times a week and i'm always coming but it, it made me mm -hmm. think about when we were raising the boys and um i would in the fall when the leaves would all be so beautiful and colorful mm -hmm. we'd be on a drive and i'd be like boys look at this is amazing look at how beautiful look at the reds because that's really how i met god and i started to realize that I don't think my boys are as excited about <laughs> fall and it happened every fall. I wish I would have known that, yeah. you know, because I was, that's how I met God. Right. And I was kind of bringing, they were always polite, mm -hmm. but I could say, I could, I could, I could read their minds. Oh, here she goes again. <laughs> You know? <laughs> what I think is interesting is if you look at your relationships yeah. and how you interact with people, mm -hmm. this has opened up my eyes even more. And not only in how you connect with God, but just in how he's designed you, right. you know, yeah. whether 
your natural pathways to connect with God through nature or whether you like or don't really like paying attention to nature right. can just be a difference in you. And it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, my wife, Shannon, and I are both uh, both into nature, both yeah. being outside. She needs to see the sunset every day. Mm. Like mm. this is her thing and it just enriches uh -huh. her. I have almost no desire to see the sunset. Yeah. I want to be up and watch the sun rise. Yeah. It's a new day, a new yeah. opportunity for yeah. me. And, but for my wife, it's the colors of the sunset. But yeah. I would much rather be up in the morning before the sun comes up and welcome the sun to <laughs> yeah. the new day. So it's just an interesting thing, even yeah. within that, that we yeah. are so, yeah. so yeah. different in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, at Shoreline, we've got uh, seven spiritual markers. We've got biblical engagement and passionate prayer and whole uh consistent community and wholehearted worship and joyful generosity and organic outreach. It seems as, as we talk about these nine pathways that there, there's some really good correlation between those. Yeah. And it's not just how we connect with God, but how we grow in our faith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. How do you see, Kevin, these yeah. spiritual markers and the pathways kind of intersecting and working with one another? Yeah. And I, I and I think, I, I've used some terminology that at least for, for me is helpful. It's not pertinent, no, no um, illustration is perfect, but um, you know, I look at the pathways or more like a menu where you go, mm. you look at the menu and you go, oh, there's certain things I enjoy and certain things I don't really, I don't enjoy. And so don't try to, you know, somebody, if somebody, you know, if we go out to a restaurant, find a new restaurant and Sherry finds something that doesn't have, uh, she like, you know, doesn't have a lot of unhealthy stuff and it really tastes good. Or like she can have that, consistently at a restaurant, right? I find things that I like. Um, and if I said to her, no, every time you come, you should just work, start on the first thing on the menu and next time do the next thing. Next. Nobody does that. Right. You, you find the ones that fit you. Well, the pathways are, what is it that fits me? How has God wired and made me? And what kind of, it's not like a self-centered, what's my personal taste. It's just how has God, God's made me. It's right. kind of like a menu in that there's certain things on it that you partake of. Mm -hmm. um, I look at the markers of spiritual maturity, the seven markers we talk about as a recipe right. where you to make to make grandma's chocolate chip cookies you need certain things and you need all those things so i made grandma's chocolate chip cookies i just didn't use any chocolate chips you go <laughs> that's not grandma's chocolate chip cookies that's i'm sorry um i didn't use any sugar you go well yeah you know, and so and so when you look at when you look at these seven markers and and you know we spent about a year here years ago with our children's youth adult leaders talking through the bible what are the things that indicate spiritual growth and ongoing maturing so we came up and I've got them right in front of me here. Biblical engagement, passionate prayer, wholehearted worship, humble service, joyful generosity, consistent community, and organic outreach. Those seven things, that's not a menu. Oh, I'll take two of those seven. All seven of those are part of every believer's life. So whatever your pathway is, biblical engagement needs to be there because that's right. what Christians do. Now you're going to do it differently than somebody else. Right. That's fine. Uh, but but you need to be engaged with scripture, passionate prayer, joyful generosity. Somebody can say, well, you know, my spiritual pathway doesn't lead me to be generous with anything. It's like, well, no, no, that's not a pathway. That's just what it is to be a Christian. Right. And so, so, so the, the seven markers were all seeking to grow in all of those. But the pathways, that's kind of how we live out that journey of growth. Mm -hmm. And then we find the ones that fit us. And so, so I think that that, I don't know if for other people that's a helpful image, but um, the, the pathways are... You know, kind of like you go to, go to a restaurant. It's, it's the pick two or pick three menu. You don't really pick them; they choose you. But be, but there's but you're not all of them. Whereas whereas the the markers of maturity, which isn't really what this podcast is about, right. but those are for every single Christian in any part of the world, in any time in history, whatever your pathway. God's word should be part of your life. Mm -hmm. Prayer is what we do. Right. Community. So if somebody says, "Well, I meet God by hiking in the woods by myself," or "I meet God on my surfboard." And you go, that's great. You can meet God that way. But they say, that's the only way I meet God and I do nothing else. Well, then they're not engaged in consistent community. They're probably not engaged in organic outreach, sharing their faith with others either because right. they're isolating. So you can say, well, this is what I do. And you go, great. But if you say, this is the only thing I do, mm -hmm. that's going to almost always limit you from the fullness of what God wants to do in your life. So Yeah, I was just, I had a fitness picture of that. You know, if someone says, I'm really healthy. I do push-ups every day and all day long. And all I ever do is... Yeah. push-ups like I don't eat anything I, I don't sleep well I don't drink right. water I just do push-ups all the yeah. time they're not gonna be a healthy person right, right? they might have a big chest um, <laughs> but they're not gonna really be a healthy person and and th I think that's a big thing about this that 
the pathways aren't just how you connect with God. It's how you get to know God in a better way. It's how you become more like Jesus. It's, and so I think that's where those markers really matter because yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. there should be some, we should see something different. You know, if you're connecting with God, if you're spending time with mm-hmm. him, then you should look different. Yeah. Like your your faith should be deepened yeah. and it should be more mm-hmm. than yeah. just now I'm a really good surfer because I surf all of the yeah. time. I, I think one of the ways they're similar, though, is that kind of what I was referring to, that we do have a part For in sure. this walk with God that, and just as I said before, from the beginning of time, he's allowed us. Yeah. And I, I like Gary talks about uh, tending the, the garden of our soul mm-hmm. and that uh, the seeds are planted. But what are you doing mm-hmm. to, you know, make help the garden to grow? What's your part? And and both of these um, lists, we have a part yeah. in growing in our relationship with God. Well, I, I love that. That's a good next uh, thought um, is that we do have a part. So mm-hmm. I'd love to hear from both of you. For, for someone who's listening who maybe hasn't explored any of these, they, they've heard them today, they might open up the book, they might be listening to the, ser- uh, the sermons, which we would love for you to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, where do you start? What, what do you do with this? Where do you go? What are the, the first steps or next steps to to really start to grow closer to Jesus and, and explore these pathways? Yeah. Yeah, well, I would say uh, a, a great first step is to, um, you know, to to look at Gary's book or do the, the, the assessment, use the assessment tool. E- either one is a good starting point. Uh, but I think that the best thing you can do is get the biblical picture. Mm. And that is that, you know, so one of the things I'm doing in every one of the sermons that I do with each of the markers, uh, or with, with each of the pathways is saying, here's a biblical character who approach things this way. So people can be that, that biblical character, uh, you know, you know, looking at David's just his, his, you know, passionate worship or, or looking at, uh, the apostle Paul's, you know, Paul was multilingual, very intellectual. It's still, and, and when you look at most biblical characters, there's, you know, most biblical characters will have show more than one pathway because most of us have more than one pathway. And one of the things that Gary says is interesting is if you look at the whole life of Jesus, he modeled all nine mm-hmm. pathways because he right. connected with the Father in the in the most you know powerful way you know possible, and he was united with the Father. But I think for people to look and, and to say that these are biblical, um, there's biblical examples of all of these. I think that should be the starting point. Is what does the Scripture say? And so whether somebody watches the you know the these three sermons that. that deal with these and look at those biblical characters or goes into Gary's book and in Gary's book you can sit down and read it from beginning to end but you can also if you do the survey tool uh, you can then go to the book and look at your two or three strongest areas and it's not that you don't care about the other ones but initially look at the ones that you're strongest in who are the biblical characters uh, he, he looks at a lot of times at people through history that model that kind of a kind of a pathway and then if you just stop and think okay who are people I know that kind of you know, and, and you'll begin to identify them and see them. And I, I've shared a couple of people in sermons. I have another person I'm going to share about this coming week, uh, somebody who's kind of an activist personality who just wants to partner with God and making the world the right, the way it needs to be. Um, and these are people who I haven't looked, I haven't you know, had them do the, use this assessment tool and then reviewed it. I just know them. And I know this is how you connect with God because I watch you doing it all the time. And so I think I think you know I, you could start with the survey tool, you could start with the book, you could start with watching the sermons. But I think it, get to the biblical examples, dig into those, and then begin to look and say, how does this connect in my life? And and then and then live it out. Find the ones that you're strong in, and the you know kind of the the self um, realized you know kind of as you're living it and stepping into it, and you go, man, I'm feeling closer to God. That's that's the, the objective anyways. And so mm-hmm. see what it does in your own spiritual life. Yeah, the, yeah, I love that. Just reminding us, what is the objective of this? Right. It's to feel close with God. I, I know this morning, I I was just like, I, you know what, I need to take some time and just grow in in, in, in more intimacy, intimacy with God today. I, I need it. Mm-hmm. And I went, oh, I'm going to take a long walk. And then I actually took my phone with me and um, put a, a psalm on it. Mm. And now I didn't. I wasn't thinking through all this, all right. but it's just who I am now. And I I meditated on this psalm while I was walking this morning, mm-hmm. and um and so the goal is that that we are walking with Jesus. We're yeah. walking with God more intimately, and 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 we know that that I think our deepest longing is for that. Mm-hmm. 
I think that is a fantastic way to end. Yeah. And that we are going to just embrace this longing and, and yeah. pursue it and through that connect with God in a new way. Thank you, Kevin and Sherry, for yeah. joining us Thanks, today. This Thanks, has Kate. been a lot of fun. Yeah. My pleasure. Whether you're watching on our YouTube channel or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear more of our weekly episodes. Thanks for listening.